Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Derek the Deathfin. So again, this is not available on Steam, and this is one of those rare titles I've looked at this month that is not available on Desura. But what this is, is a recently ported to PC and Mac version of a formerly PSN exclusive, I believe. Uh, they came out a little bit later last year, like the fall or winter of last year on PSN. Uh, but now that it's on PC, I'm actually getting a chance to check it out. And it's kind of a weird amalgam of, like, Echo the Dolphin and, like, Sonic the Hedgehog. But the main draw, at least from a visual perspective for Derek the Deathfin, is that everything is really modeled in these kind of, like, cool papercraft ways. Everything's all, like, polygonal and geometric, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I've played about 45 minutes so far, and I think I have a fairly good grasp uh, on what's going on in this game. So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate what the heck is going on for you guys and uh, at the end of the video I'll explain to you how you can actually get this as it is not available on those distribution platforms so uh, we are playing as Derek here and we have a kind of I don't know I'm gonna embarrass myself here what is this like an octahedron modeled version of uh, the world itself so we have all these continents available to us I've done the Americas this is like divided into like world level type setup so Americas were the first and then Asia is the second so why don't we go to like one of the earliest levels in the game just to explain what is going on and the game itself will tutorialize a little bit for us in the background as well so that is Derek right there uh, he is our papercraft shark and he is on a mission of vengeance essentially by the way I am using the Xbox 360 controller here as you can probably tell from the tutorialization uh, as this originally oh as this originally came out on consoles I figured uh the Xbox 360 controller would be a good choice for me. So we have a number of different ways to control Derek here. We can eat crabs, as you can see. We can eat all sorts of uh, nonsense. Uh, that's using the A button or the B button to do like a dash attack, uh, like so, which you can see right there. Now when we eat things, that refills our hunger meter up there at the top. The other thing that refills it is collecting gems. It almost has like a, a crunch type setup where the more you play, like just as time goes on, uh, your hunger goes down, or I guess your hunger goes up, technically. Oh, I got the last one. I've never done that before. Um, yeah, your hunger goes up. So you have to constantly be eating things, oh god, or you're gonna fail the level. Don't do it! Eat some gems! Eat some seagulls, it's all good. Yeah, you constantly have to be either collecting gems or eating things in order to keep yourself alive. Otherwise, if it, all things being the same, if you just don't touch anything throughout the course of the entire level, you're just going to die eventually, and I've had that happen many times. So I did collect all the gems here. We're going to talk a little bit as we do some of these early levels. Don't worry, I'll move on to some more difficult ones as we move on. Um, yeah, our main goal, it's almost got like an element of Crash Bandicoot in it as well as you're like collecting these gems in the levels. And the only way that you can unlock uh, later worlds is by collecting all the gems, or as many gems as you possibly can, uh, in almost like a Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64 style. In addition to that, uh, we've got all these like flaming tires. The general like pretense... We're only missing four gems, maybe we could actually get those on this one. Uh, the general pretense of this game is basically that our mother and father, you know, were just minding their own business until some asshole, probably working at British Petroleum or something, uh, sucked them up into a machine and killed them and uh, we decided, you know, for the rest of our lives we were gonna spend our time trying to avenge the death of our mother and our father. Okay, we gotta eat something quickly or we're gonna die. The remaining gem was somewhere up here, was it not? I would really like to 100% these early. There we go. Awesome. Now just don't die. And we should do well here. Yeah. But again, yeah, almost like a, uh, a Crash Bandicoot style where you've got to get like X number of gems to open up the next continent. But there is also like a uh, kind of like boss mechanic involved in the game as well. There's lots of different influences at work here for sure. Uh, but we're going to continue onwards now. So there are, again, I'm going to mention another influence here. I'm not sure if it's a direct influence of the game. Uh, but there is a second kind of level, which kind of reminds me almost of like Joe Danger, the way these levels are set up to kind of like encourage somewhat unusual stunts like getting out of the water and uh, also the, you know occasionally on levels just having a time attack mode like this or a certain time limit in which case we have to finish the level uh, in under that time limit in order to succeed so this is one such level uh, I've only encountered these two different kinds of levels so far with the exception of boss levels which of course all fall within uh, their own kind of unique category as well I hope what I oh that's not good I hope what I just said made any sense at all but I'm not totally sure that it did so these are the kind of levels where basically we are just racing against the clock to finish them as fast as possible uh, and we will get a trophy gold silver or bronze based on our speed I've already done this one before these levels do have the tendency to sometimes be a little bit difficult uh, depending on your affinity for this kind of stuff and your familiarity with the surroundings around you but in any case we got a silver there that's the fastest we've ever done. I feel like I could easily get a gold on this level. Let's try it again. I don't want to do the boss just yet. I'm going to do like, you know, five to seven minutes of early levels here. Then we'll get into some blind levels. And you can get a feel for how the uh, difficulty progression of the game goes. Because it has, so far, uh, been reasonably easy. I haven't really been stuck at any point. But again, I have only played for 40 minutes. I don't have any idea of the actual length of the game overall. 
Uh, but it seems like things move quite briskly, assuming you uh, know what you're doing with respect to this stuff. So let's come down and around here. Again, uh, the Joe Danger vibe is a weird one, but I can't help but uh, you know get the feeling that that's an intentional one as well. That's going to be way faster than our past run. So that's going to give us a gold for sure. Anyway, we're going to continue, and maybe we will do the uh, boss level right now. But I just wanted to tell you, or give you a feel. We can't really see it right now. Uh, but when we get to Asia, you'll see that there is like a an internal or a demonstrated kind of locking system for continents. It'll be like, okay, you need 500 gems to move from Asia to uh, Europe or something like that. I'm not actually sure what continent comes next. And also, like, X number of uh, flaming tires exploded. This is not the level I wanted to do. Excuse me. That was totally my bad, but in any case, uh, let's go to the boss for the Americas. And I guess this will basically just be me playing through the first, you know, five levels of the Americas to kind of give you a feel for how things work here. Uh, so the boss levels are completely different from the style of the game that you have to do in either like a race or a collecting style. Uh, on these ones, what we have to do is actually just kind of puzzle solve. So if we hit this button, we can see, you know, that this uh, horizon drilling system comes down here. And it doesn't do anything. So what we actually have to do is, you know, do some exploration and be like, hum da dum da dum what do we do? Oh, there's a weird, like, undersea mine up here. So we're just going to try to echo the dolphin that shit out. And then push it under here. Obviously, I'm going a little bit faster because I know what to expect and how to do it. This is a fin on it. As if, like, a fish actually became this undersea mine through some kind of, like, abomination of science. Anyway. Now we push the button, obviously the drill will explode, and everything will come tumbling down. The main draw for this game, for sure, uh, from a like first impressions type perspective, is the papercraft style visuals and the storytelling, as you can see. The story is told through this kind of, almost like a virus named Tom style storytelling, where we don't get too much uh, narration or you know exposition throughout the levels, uh, but every time that we complete a boss level, we get a little bit more... Uh, told in that same kind of style. Yeah, you know what? A virus named Tom is a fairly good uh, approximation. I'm surprised that I just pulled that reference out of my ass, essentially. Uh, if we exit the Americas here, let's go to Asia. So I've done the first five or so levels in Asia. If I just come down here, three, four, five, six. All right, have we done? I have done level six, I think. But you can see, to unlock the next zone, I need seven flaming tires exploded and 253 more gems. I'm actually not sure if I've done this level. We will see fairly quickly. Everything is black and white, and that worries me a little bit. I guess we are in uh, Russia right now. This is a new level. Okay, I've never touched this before. Uh, sometimes the difficulty does ramp up fairly quickly, even though the game has been fairly easy so far. Uh, these levels go from being like fairly straightforward and like smooth to being all jagged like this, and that makes things substantially more difficult. Please just get to the exit. Eat the hot pepper. Don't get crushed by the floating fish time critical so close uh, we technically won there I think because we didn't die uh, did we complete it I think we did but we should restart that level and do a little bit better because that was pretty poor on my part there's definitely an element of like replaying levels constantly especially right after you finish them in order to do a little bit better uh, at least in my experience so far so I think the way we should do this I'm, I'm almost playing it like a racing game now like when I come to the corners just slow down lay off that right trigger for a second and instead, kind of accelerate through the apex of the turn there, down at the bottom. I'm probably not the fastest I could possibly be doing it, uh, but certainly it's a lot faster than I was doing before. I missed that uh, hot pepper, though. But in any case, this is substantially faster than I did it before. Is that worth a gold? Or a silver? Gold, awesome. So yeah, there is an element of, like, you get better at the game much more quickly than you might expect, shall we say. I uh, will probably play through uh, Asia here, all the way to the final boss. If I could just, sometimes it's a little finicky to move from level to level. We still do need... Uh, like, the element of collection is, is very, very strongly emphasized in this game. Like, when I beat uh, the Americas, I didn't have any problems beating the Americas. However, uh, I did struggle to unlock Asia, because you actually did have to, or I did, I guess I should say. You haven't played it yet. Oh, my hunger is insatiable! Uh, eat the broccoli, it heals you so much! There we go, who would have thought? Sharks plus broccoli, a match made in heaven. Um, oh god, eat the broccoli again, and then eat the... Uh, makes you fart fire. Like so, there we go. Okay, that's gonna allow us to get all the gems and proceed. Um, yeah, so I, like I beat the levels, but I wasn't very completionist about it. There's a tire we should explode. Uh, and by very completionist about it, I mean like I just kind of sped through the levels, completed them, and then was like, oh, I'm so good at video games. Then it was like, hey, motherfucker, you need like 50 more gems uh, if you're ever gonna succeed or proceed to the next continent. And I was like, oh, okay, so we'll go back. 
We'll do a little bit of, uh, you know, collection focused. It's a game that emphasizes speed as well as collection. Which is weird for me, because I was never into those kind of games as a kid. Those always struck me maybe just because of Sonic, but they always struck me as more Genesis-y. Oh, eat something. Eat the fish! Um, they always struck me as more Genesis-y, and I was always a, uh, a Super Nintendo fan when I was younger. Not to say that, you know, I haven't played a little bit more of the Genesis stuff as I've gotten older. Uh, but, you know, it, it's just, it's never been my focus. I've always been like a move left to right guy. You know, jump on top of enemies. Don't F this up for yourself. Oh my god, you're gonna die. You fool, the broccoli down here? Oh, there's some scuba divers or anglerfish. Delicious. You know, I actually ate anglerfish once. It was very bony and I didn't like it a great deal. Okay, now, there's some floating trash in here. Please tell me. Oh my god, just get to the end of the level. Alright, put me out of my own misery. That was rough. Uh, I missed out on like probably 50 gems there as well as several tires, but at least we can proceed here a little bit. Maybe? Level 8 might be the last level, although I'm gonna guess that there's kind of a boss at the end of this. I certainly hope so. Oh, you know what it is? There's also two kinds of bosses. I neglected to mention that uh, a little bit earlier. But there's bosses you fight. Oh, get the anglerfish. There's bosses you fight, uh, and then there's bosses that are more like structures that you're basically taking down, like that uh, you know, deep water horizon drill we saw earlier. So there's gonna be a ton of gems to collect here. I should really do my best, because these do keep your hunger up. It makes sense for me to try to collect as many of these as possible, and that counter at the bottom right is extremely helpful uh, in doing that. I'm gonna save the anglerfish, because I might need to eat those later. Uh, in any case though, 69, come down here. There's no need for us to speed, there's no bonus for beating the level in a certain amount of time, I think, anyway. I wish these divers would just get out of the way, there's a fucking shark and they're just like, herp da herp da herp I don't care. Oh, well, I gotta eat something now to keep going. I'm only missing 16, which is pretty good. This is an amaze, or amaze type level though, sadly. Uh, which is bad for me as someone who oftentimes struggles with navigation, but we are gonna probably... Maybe that's the only thing we have to do on this mission, is actually get every single gem. Eat something, thank you. So we're missing, what, like three at this point? Hmm. Oh, did I see one down here? No, that was just the gem on the right side of the screen. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming that we're gonna unlock the boss when we get all three of these gems, or that we're just gonna be able to complete the level at that point. I have no idea. Please give me some sort of mini-map. I'm finding myself in a difficult position. I don't want to die! Eat this scuba divers. Very high in protein. Scuba divers, little known fact. Uh, get some more here, because I am getting a little low. Uh, and yeah, the maze is taking its toll on me, that's for sure. Although I think this is maybe a new part of the level that I haven't seen before. Although going lower is almost never a good thing. Oh my god, please tell me that this is not going to be... I, whenever I'm doing a video like this and I end up in a situation where uh, all of the progress that I've made so far seems to like hit a brick wall, that's always incredibly agonizing. It happened before in like the first Stealth Bastard video that- oh god, eat something. I'm just going around in circles. Health critical duh, eat the scuba diver- um, maybe up is the right way to go here. Um, the first Stealth Bastard video that I did- ah, oh, that's a new area for sure. Uh, I got like really, really stuck. And we're gonna fight the sting right now. And it was just like, 10 minutes of me talking about the game, and then... Like a half hour of me being like, I don't understand how to beat this puzzle. So I think we gotta like, come up and hit this guy... When he comes underneath us. Or maybe we just have to get out. That might be the actual solution here. Okay, but we have to defeat him somehow. The only question is how. Cause we can't just crash into the top of him. Usually they're like, when I fought the last boss, there was like a weak point. That was able that was able to um, kind of leverage against the enemy. But what's the weak point of a stingray? Is it the underside? Oh, it's bleeding. That would indicate to me that yes, the weak point is the underside. I'm not sure what we got there. Kill it! Eat the jellyfish as much as it hates me! Oh my god, I died of starvation. That is so shitty. We're gonna have to redo the level. From the start? I hope not, but it looks like it. Yep, we gotta collect all 200 gems again. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be an exciting run here. So just play it cool, follow the line, and then we won't have to look for uh, all of the gems like I did last time. This is a great game for me to play too, as 
anyone who's a fan of the channel is probably familiar, uh, I have a deep-seated fear of undersea creatures for whatever reason. I think it's, it's like the combination of the of humankind's innate fear of the unknown, plus they just look weird as all hell. Fish don't bother me so much, but, you know, squid, anglerfish, I'll eat it! But if I have to see it, or touch it, <laughs> to get the heebie-jeebies, even in a video game. But in any case, controlling here, come on down, grab this stuff. This is going much smoother than it went before. But I am going to have to kind of keep an eye out uh, for the path upwards. There we go. There's all the gems. That went better than last time. It gets a little smoother. The levels are not, like, difficult to, to learn what to do. I would never go as far as to uh, stress that. Uh, it's very easy to progress as you move onwards and upwards to bigger and better things. This is obviously where our boss is because we have... Shouldn't eat those. I should save some. Uh, yeah, you gotta save some food in order to keep your, your health up, basically. So I, I'm pretty sure what we want to do is just that right there, basically. Even though that does hurt me, too. Uh, so eat the fish, get back up to a decent level of health. Then we'll wait up here. Just avoid the teeth. More or less. Uh, mission accomplished to a certain extent. We're gonna have to come out of here in a second next time. Is this guy bleeding yet? That's an important... Oh! Oh, God! Eat the squid, or the jellyfish, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Okay, we're back in the good books with respect to health. He caught up to me. Man, he is quick and ruthless. That was a very terrible play on my part. Grab the squid. We're gonna get under here. We're gonna pop out, do some damage. He's bleeding, so I think I'm doing the right thing here. But I can't help but feel that it's not the right thing because... He's taking way too long to kill. Just bump into him or something. Oh my god, there's like two squid left. I don't know what I'm supposed to attack. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So we killed the stingray. We should be able to move on. That should be the end of the level. Oh, fantastic. That was incredibly difficult. For me, at least. And I got perfect with respect to the uh, number of gems. But I still think we're not quite ready to unlock the next continent. How many do we need? We need four more tires. But zero more gems, so we're okay for gems. Where am I missing a bunch of tires? Four out of five. Where's level one? Zero out of two on the last level. Okay, I can probably find those at some point. Uh, three out of four. Man, I'm not missing all that many. I just kind of want to go... Oh, zero out of four on level two. Okay, so this is where we're going to make our progress here. I really just want to see what the next uh, continent is actually going to be. I'll talk about my overall impressions of uh, Derek the Deathfin as we finish this up, of course. This was the level I- oh, you know what? I remember what I'm doing here. Okay. I botched this pretty hard already. Eat this thing. I didn't actually take this path the first time. I wonder if the tires are actually down here. I mean, obviously they're out of the water, but... I gotta figure out where out of the water they are. There's one. Okay, so that's an easy one. That's an easy one, I said. Good enough. Eat some fish. Traverse the garbage... dispenser here. Oh! There we go, there's two. There's- is that something to eat? That's a rock! Oh, there's so much food that I can't get to. Alright, well at least we know where they are this time. Let's try that again. I guess they, it's fair to say that the game does get a little bit more difficult as you play, uh, at least in my experience so far. If this is any indication, so we can just proceed this way, I guess. It might be faster to do it the gems way, or safer to do it the gems way, because you do get health for those gems, but it's also a little bit more finicky. There's an easy one. Then we'll eat some food, and then we'll go through the garbage maze. Now, where's the other food? We should come in here to Jellyfish Town. This is a huge resource for me, from a caloric perspective. And now we've just got to hit the tire, harder than it looks. Go back to your initial feeding frenzy spot. Why is this so difficult? God damn. Okay, so come out here. Oh my god. Sometimes the controls can be a little finicky, especially for someone like myself who, who did not play uh, Echo the Dolphin as a child. I'm more used to Mario. Okay, we ate all the jellyfish. Now we really gotta make this one work for us. There we go. There's another tire back there, but we should just proceed so I can get these tires, or these, uh, yeah, these tires banked, basically. Alright, so we got two there. I think if we continue and we focus on the other tires, then it should be okay. We just need two more, uh, which will be in level two here, I think. And if we fail this, this time maybe I'll just show off the, uh, sec- or the regular boss fight in Asia. Not the Stingray, but the, like, 
structural boss fight, if you will. Again, this is uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog element that is worth stressing here. If you do the level this way... Oh, there's only one uh, gem that I'm missing now. So we've already gotten this tire. We can eat those seagulls, believe it or not. I bet you do believe it. Oh, I'm gonna die again. Seems like a good opportunity for me to uh, take a lesson from this and actually just go check out the uh, structural boss fight to demonstrate that there is a little bit of variety with respect to that as well. But in any case, we're getting close to the end of the video here. Let's just go back up to Asia quickly. And I will demonstrate the second boss fight burp, but if I could navigate to the level at hand, please? Where is it? I thought it was, it was... Maybe I was on it a second ago. Yeah, it's this one right here. Okay. So this one takes place in Russia as opposed to off the coast of South America. And what we have to do is destroy these uh, nuclear reactors or, I don't know, oil drums down here. From the Mean Corporation, which, you know, makes up the uh, main antagonist of the game. Unfortunately, I hit that one a little bit too hard. But all we're doing in this one is trying to hit the uh, torpedo or the undersea mine, I guess, again, as hard as we can. Well, not as hard as we can, but we wanted to land on those X's. Which, in the end, is going to mean that we have to hit it as hard as we can. Oh, that was awful. There is, like, a real physics-based system here. If you just hit it on the top, like, lightly, it's not going to move very far for you. But if you hit it... You know, in that sweet spot, like so. It's almost like curling. Uh, you can really make this work for you. So we'll try to hit the third one here, and that will be the end of uh, this boss fight, and probably this video as well. So let's... Eh, it was alright. It was a little bit off, though. It's really got to land, like, under that plutonium store there. There we go. That one should be absolutely perfect. Pretty much a direct hit, and that will do it, as we probably get some kind of cutscene here for the end of that boss fight. In uh, Derek the Death Fin. So this is an interesting game. Uh, it's currently going standalone on the developer's website, and I'll put a link to that in the video description if you are interested in checking it out. I believe it's between seven and eight dollars, which, to be fair, is probably like a fair and you know just price for this game. I haven't been having the greatest time with it so far. Sometimes the controls a little finicky, but the real question for most people is going to be: uh, Is it worth it? at that price to play a game that looks as visually striking as this. For some people that answer is going to be yes, for some people that answer is going to be no. Uh, for me that answer is a little bit mixed. There are better platformers I think, or platformers that I prefer, uh, but this is a good enough game in its own right and I think it's at a reasonable price at that price point. But in any case, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check it out, I will put a link in the video description. As always, thank you for watching for the third time and I will see you next time.